Hey everyone, how to Unity here, and in this video I'm going to be covering how to make 2D water in Unity. So this video is going to be consisting of two parts. In the first part, I'll be showing you guys how to make a simple 2D water animation in GIMP. And in the second part, we'll be importing all those images into our Unity project, and we will be adding 2D physics to our water and testing out collisions with our water. So let's get started. Alright guys, so now you can open up any image editing software you'd like but I'm going to be using GIMP because it's free. So to create our 2D water flow effect, we're going to create a wave line. And now we're going to fill underneath our wave line. And the desired effect for our animation is to create a sort of flow effect. So to do that, we're going to have to create multiple layers. And each of those layers are going to be acting as frames. And those frames are going to be just shifted wave lines from the frame before that, so it's gonna look like it's flowing. So hopefully that made sense and it should make more sense as we go on. All right guys, so this wave is gonna be acting as our first frame. So we're gonna rename the layer frame one. For our new layer, we're gonna create a new layer with fill white. And we're gonna shift this underneath our first frame. And basically we want our wave line shifted to the right to create that flow animation once we compile all the frames together. So I'll go ahead and do that and show you guys after. So a really nice method that I used to draw these layers were to set the opacity of the layer above it to 50% so I could see that image just barely and use that as a reference image to draw my wave line and shift it a little bit to the right. All right guys, so this is the uh, first frame and the second frame looks like this and we're just going to be creating more frames and doing the same thing uh, so the next frame would be shifted to the right a little more and until we get back to the first frame so I'm going to go ahead and do that and show you guys after so Okay, so I've just finished creating all my frames. Uh, I feel that five is good enough for this. And obviously if you add more frames, the more detailed the animation would be. So I recommend adding more than five frames to create a detailed water animation. But if you are in GIMP currently, um, and you've completed all these steps, then if you go over to filters and animations, you can hit playback and preview your animation that you created. So this is the animation that I got. It's not really the greatest, but hopefully you guys can do better than me following those steps or that logic. All right guys, so now we're gonna make our white part, all the white parts of our frames um, transparent. And all right, so to do that, you wanna select the area that uh, we want to clear out and make transparent so we're going to select everything except our water and we're going to hit right click we're going to go to edit and hit clear and you should see that it makes everything transparent except our water so now we're going to do that to all of our frames So once you've finished making uh, the white parts transparent, we're going to go and export each of our layers as separate PNGs. So I'll go ahead and do that.
Alright guys, so now in Unity I just have a blank or empty scene and empty project and if you open up our file file folder here um, I have all of our PNGs which were our layers in GIMP uh, exported as separate images and we're just going to go ahead and shift click all these images and import them into Unity. Alright guys, so now in our scene we're going to create a new new 2D object sprite and we're going to name this water. Okay, so now on our water, we're going to hit animation and click create new animation. And we'll name it water animation. Alright, so now we're going to hit the red record button. And we're just going to be cycling through each of our water pictures. And it's going to create that animation of, um, of water flowing. So if you go to our first sprite, then we can set it equal to water frame one. And if you go to around here, you can set it to water frame two and around 12, water frame three and 18, water frame four. And finally, 24 water frame 5 and we can actually delete this part and okay so now if we hit play right here let me zoom out it was the same effect as we got in GIMP and make sure that these the sprites that you set are in correct order alright so that's perfect and now we can scale this down so it's viewable in the game window and we can just position it like that and now what we're going to do is add a new box collider 2d onto our sprite and we're going to also add a buoyancy effector and this is the part that's going to be uh, controlling our water physics and it's a really nice tool to get used to um, if you're dealing with any liquid physics and in order for this to work our box collider needs to be set to is trigger and use by effector so there's a lot of different options on our buoyancy effector and um, we can in fact change a lot of things like surface level and angle magnitude and variation so if I want my surface level, you can see the green line right there shift up. So we can set our surface level to negative 0.5. Okay, so now we're going to test out our water by creating a new 2D object sprite and cube or square. And we'll just give it a square sprite and we'll reset the position give it like an order of layer in negative one and we'll add a rigid body 2d and a box collider 2d as well and we can hit play now perfect so now you can see that our uh, cube 2d object is floating in the water and which is exactly what we wanted and now if we go over to our water 2d sprite uh, we can actually hit flow and underneath flow we can actually change the flow variation which is going to change the direction that our objects or um, collisions move in so if I were to move our flow variation positively and you can see our cube is going to the right and if I were to go negative then it moves to the left and magnitude also has the same effect um, but it's sort of like a multiplier. And finally, density will change how much our object floats or sinks. And in other words, it basically edits the buoyancy. So if we were to make it positive, obviously density would be really high. And our buoyancy factor would be really high as well. And if you make it negative, it sinks quicker. Okay, so that's basically it, guys. If you did enjoy, consider like hitting that like and subscribe button.
for more content and I will be bringing a new series called the asset review series where I'll just be reviewing assets that are useful for your game creation. So with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.